In this video, I would be describing the macroscopic internal anatomy of a kidney. So in front of you, there is a coronal or a frontal section through a kidney. And it's showing you the three distinct regions which are visible through naked eye. That's why this, this is known as macroscopic internal anatomy. You don't need to use a microscope to observe these uh, regions. So here, the outermost region, which is lying underneath the capsule, immediately underneath the capsule of kidney, is the cortex or the renal cortex. This is a lighter region, lighter in color, and it appears quite granular because of the presence of microscopic structural and functional units of a kidney, and they are known as nephrons and the urine, uriniferous tubules. Because of the presence of those microscopic structure, this cortex gives off a punctate appearance, but it is lighter in color. Then the intermediate region, which is pretty much darker as compared to the outermost region. This is known as the medulla or the medullary region. And you can see over here that the substance of medulla has been divided into pyramid-shaped uh, smaller regions by what? By, by the downward extension of cortical tissue. They are known as the renal column of Burton. So renal columns of Burton are nothing but the, the downward extension of cortical tissue within the substance of medulla. And they divide the medulla into almost five to eight distinctly visible pyramid-shaped regions. They are known as renal pyramids. So if you look at the pyramid, each pyramid is having a base facing the cortex and its tapered off apex is facing inward and actually it's opening up into um, a tube-like structure that's minor calyx, one part of the collecting system. So if you look at the substance of medulla, or each medullary pyramid, it appears like, like it's striped. It has a striped appearance. The entire medulla has a striped appearance because of the presence of almost vertically running, like parallelly vertical running, running tubes, which are known as the collecting ducts. So 80, 85 to 95% of the uh, uh, medullary substance has been composed of these collecting ducts. That's why it appears striped all over. Now, I have to mention at this point that each medullary pyramid, along with its adjacent cortical cap, will make a, a renal lobe. So if I say that this, if you imagine my finger and this brush, they are, you know, encasing one renal lobe. And I just have mentioned that there are five to eight pyramids present in each kidney. So there must be five to eight lobes present in each kidney, okay? We'll talk about each lobe in detail later on. Then after the intermediate region, we come across to the innermost region, which is close to the medial border of the kidney. And this region is known as the renal sinus. Why renal sinus? Because it's, it's, a, it's a space that is having certain structures. First and foremost, and the most obvious one, is like it is having a flattened tubular structure, which is like a funnel shaped. Okay, you can see it's funnel shaped. This is known as renal pelvis. So the renal sinus, this region, which is just adjacent to the hilum of kidney, is, is having has been occupied by a renal pelvis. This renal pelvis has been formed by uh, minor calices. So like you can see, each medullary pyramid is, or, or renal pyramid is opening up into a minor calyx. And then my, these minor calices, two to three minor calices will join to form a major calyx. 
And in each kidney, there are almost two to three major calices. They will join to form a renal pelvis, which is being represented as a bright yellow colored, you know, region or tube. Pelvis is a Latin term used for a flat receptacle or basin. Okay, and in Greek, uh, it's been known as pylos. Okay, so this renal pelvis is in eventually that has been formed by the collection of minor calices and then forming the major calyx and each like the two to three major calices will join to form this funnel shaped renal pelvis and this pelvis gets out out of the kidney through hilum and then continues da itself downward as ureter which is a you know a tube for the transmission of urine down into the urinary bladder Okay, here we can also see certain structures which are vascular. So at the hilus, through the hilus, the renal artery, renal vein, nerves which would be serving the, the kidney tissue, and the lymphatics which would be coming out of draining the, the, the kidney tissue, and also the renal pelvis. All of these structures are occupying this, this uh, renal sinus region. 